coming up on WMBD News at noon, drivers in the Twin Cities will start to see a lot more construction in the works. We'll tell you which projects may impact your daily commutes. Also, Starved Rock State Park faces a big budget problem. In a special report, we explore how the issue could impact you and what officials are doing to solve it. And food for the soul and food for the mind. See how a new initiative expanding locally to promote both health and literacy in the community. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Shelby Roberts. Our top story this afternoon, a man is under arrest after locking police into a standoff near Hayworth Friday night. He spent hours barricaded inside of a semi. State police have not named that man, but they do say he was wanted in connection with an aggravated kidnapping. They believe that that case is out of the Chicago area. After several hours, troopers broke into an, a truck window to make that arrest. And that standoff shut down U.S. Route 51 near County Road 100 North in both directions. The kidnapping victim was not with that suspect. In other news, drivers in Bloomington will soon see a lot more construction. The city is getting ready to start its yearly pavement repair work. This year's program includes 70 different roads. The week of that road work, you'll want to look for temporary no parking signs on each street. Those restrictions will be in effect from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The work begins next Monday, the 14th, and it's expected to wrap up by the 25th. Well, people in the Twin Cities are showing their support after losing one of their own. A group gathered at Pizza Ranch yesterday to show support for Kyleen Johnson. Johnson recently lost her son Reggie after he was hit and killed by a car. Reggie started working at Pizza Ranch only four weeks ago, but he quickly became loved by customers and his co-workers because of his big smile and positive attitude. Kyleen Johnson says she can't thank Pizza Ranch and the community enough for being there during this very tough time. Johnson Johnson and her family received 10% of all the sales and 100% of all the tips that were made on Sunday. Well, a first responder shortage has one group in Pontiac coming up with some new ways to fix that problem. For many rural communities, first responders rely heavily on citizen volunteers. Those volunteers help to bolster resource-constrained fire and emergency service departments at all levels. But in many areas throughout the state, very few people are volunteering, leaving too few providers to respond to emergency calls. OSF Healthcare St. James in Pontiac is working to provide training for those people with the help of online technology. You can head on over to our mobile app, CI Proud to Go, to see when those classes will be offered. The state's number one attraction is facing a number of problems. And as WMBD's Kimberly Eaton reports, money hasn't come in quickly as people forcing the park to a critical point. Look in any Central Illinois tour guide and there is one attraction you'll see every time. Historic, heavily traveled, but lately making headlines for a different reason. Starved Rock State Park is beautiful and it's at a breaking point. How dire is the budgetary, the financial situation? An exception has to be made for this state park. At the entrance to the Tonte Canyon Trail signs, turn away would-be hikers. Erosion making it too dangerous to keep open to the public. Star Rock Foundation President Pam Gravetti fears a ripple effect of closures if visitors keep coming and extra funding doesn't follow. The bottom line is if we are going to preserve this park for our future, we have to do something. We have plenty of visitors, but not enough staff, not enough finances to finance this park. Without enough money for consistent maintenance, trails that have withstood the test of time are now failing the test of tourism. The trails, the, the stairways, the walkways, um, you know, the last few years have been very hard on them. A record-breaking 2.8 million people visited in 2017. Star Rock on pace to welcome more than 2.4 million people this year. Numbers that rival national parks. When you get to the park here in Utica, it's free to enter and it's free to park. Those features, the ones that make it so wildly popular, are the same ones that are hurting Starved Rock financially. So volunteers are asking Illinois lawmakers for help, finding an ally in Senator Sue Rezin. Now I brought it up to the state level because it's just bigger than this local community. Starved Rock is in Rezin's district, and for the third time, she plans to propose legislation that would establish a small parking fee for visitors. Last time, the measure lost by a single vote. 
but she says she's not backing down. Starve Rock is uh, and should be considered, you know, a gem for the state, and we have to come up with some answers at the state level. In LaSalle County, Kimberly Eaton for WMBD News. And just yesterday, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources closed the overflow parking lot due to a full capacity. Coming up tonight, a closer look at how straying from the trails is causing more than just money problems. We'll show you how the growing issue is putting both investors, visitors, and rescuers in danger. Well, state officials say they'll issue a request for proposals next month to rebuild the Illinois Veterans Home in Quincy. The $230 million planned overhaul follows deadly outbreaks of Legionnaire's disease that started in 2015. It is the oldest and largest veterans home in the state with more than 300 residents. Plans for a replacement facility will happen in several different stages. Demolition of some buildings started last year. Public health officials in Illinois have awarded $350,000 in grants to help improve the health care of women of reproductive age. The Illinois Department of Public Health announced earlier this week that the competitive grants are going to 14 organizations and public health departments statewide. That includes health departments in Calhoun, Cass, Fulton, Henry, and Will counties. The goal is to increase the percentage of women ages 18 to 44 who get preventative medical care. The Little Free Pantry on Bloomington's West Side is expanding its mission to also promote literacy for those who come to get food. The Little Free Pantry invites people to take what you need and leave what you can. And it's continuing that same message with the Little Free Library. Like the food, the books are donated. And if you feel inclined to take a book, you can also leave a book. Mainly educational books um, is what we're focusing on, things that have basic life skills, cooking books, there's some coding books in there, so things that um, anyone can kind of learn off of. The Little Free Library is located at Preston Community Plaza, and that's at 502 South Morris Avenue in Bloomington. A Hudson High Schooler is offering hope and help to those in need, and she's making it happen with her graphic design business. Madeline Schmidt, who's a senior in high school, launched Madeline Harley Designs, and that came after her cousin committed suicide. She now uses her graphic design skills to provide awareness about suicide to others around her. I think just both raising awareness for an issue that people don't really think about and also um, just really helping individuals in our community is just what success looks like to me. Madeline's work extends beyond just mental health, though. It's a craft that she's trying not to make discreet. You'll want to tune into WMBD News on Wednesday at 10 p.m. for that story. It's an open for business, and you can also watch it right now on CIProud.com under the Marketplace tab. It takes a lot of dedication to have a single career span for five decades, but it takes an exceptional person to inspire others along the way. For Dennis West, an Army veteran and a man of service, it's just another day on the job that he loves, delivering mail to Peorians. West started his routes back in September of 1969. More than 20 years later, he and Scott Haney became friends and eventually a mentor and mentee. He's more than happy to help anybody. He'll answer questions. He'll offer advice. Uh, just, just a great person to work with. Coming up tonight on WMBD News at 10, you can hear from Dennis on why he's persevered for 50 years and also how he's inspired others to be better employees and mail carriers. I can't wait for that one. Well, still ahead, the governor's mansion is shutting down, well, at least for now. We'll explain why up next.